Predicting market movements with accuracy is not magic, it's a strategy. And one of the most reliable strategies is price action. Hello everyone, I'm Kathy Lee with BK Traders, and I want to welcome you back to our channel. Every trader should know how to analyze price action without the use of technical indicators, because price action itself can provide a wealth of information. Price action trading in general involves the analysis of trends, price movement, and candlestick patterns to identify support and resistance levels and to predict future movements. It's a form of technical analysis that doesn't rely on any indicators. In this video, we'll discuss how you as a beginner can utilize price action strategy to identify trades in any instrument. By the end of this video, you'll be able to recognize the trends and use the price action strategy to trade on your own. But before we get started, make sure you subscribe to our channel for regular trading tips and videos like this. Now let's dive into it. You might have seen the price of an asset bouncing between two invisible boundaries. Imagine this, you're looking at a currency pair that's consistently hitting a high price and then pulling back, dropping to a low price, and then it climbs again. These highs and lows are can form your trading range. The upper boundary is called resistance, where prices reach their peak before pulling back. The lower boundary is called support, where prices could touch before bouncing back above that level upwards. Now, how do we trade this? It's all about timing and location. When the price at the bottom near the support level, you want to make sure that holds. So watch for the test, maybe even the break below, followed by move back into the range zone. If support holds, it may be a good time to buy because if the pattern continues, the price is likely to rise back to the top of the range. Likewise, when the price reaches the peak near the resistance, you can close that model position and take your profit or flip to another short position, waiting for the price to go back to the previous bottom. Of course, you want to make sure that resistance level actually holds with either a test and maybe even a long reverse hammer wick or if the move is just short-lived to begin with. If it holds, it may be a good time to short for a move back towards the bottom of the zone. But currencies always aren't always trading in a range, so you'll need to identify other price patterns that can help you trade. So keep watching this video. Now let's imagine that you've spotted a perfect range zone, but this time, instead of stopping at the support level, the price actually decides to break above, as you can see in this chart. See, the range zone strategy works when the price actually respects the support and resistance levels. But what if it doesn't? Here's what you can do to spot a breakout and how you can trade it. As you can see in this price chart of dollar yen, we have dollar yen bouncing between 150.70 and 151.85 over a two week period. And it takes two weeks before it breaks to the upside. There are two ways that you can trade this. You can either wait and see if the breakout holds and we can see that three candles later where the first arrow is pointing. Dalian retraces, but less than 50% of the breakout candle and then holds the 153 level. Alternatively, the real test, which can also be seen as a second opportunity to get in, happens a few weeks later where Dalian actually drops to test the top of the range and that holds. The long wick close is another strong signal of the support level holding. In this case, going long at the open the next day's candle would have been a very smart, effective trade. The retrace is what makes this such an ideal setup. It's all about confirmation. The price is holding that level, which confirms that this is a durable breakout. When trading this kind of breakout, remember, it's important to monitor it closely. You want to set your entry point just after the retrace confirmation of the level and always, always set a stop loss just in case the market decides to go back into the range. Now let's shift gears to talk about another price action trading strategy, which is trading swing highs and swing lows. This strategy requires identifying significant highs and lows in the price chart, as these are points where the market is likely to reverse its direction. Take a look at this gold chart, for example. The price dropped so low in May, and then in June, it revisits the swing low and fails to break through it. These points, which is where the price stops moving lower, is called swing lows, and they can act as support levels. Likewise, swing highs appear where the price stops rising and it starts to move lower, making it a good resistance level to trade against. Now, the tricky part is, of course, identifying these patterns. The trading strategy itself is quite straightforward. Sell near the swing highs as the price starts to reject the higher levels and buy near the swing lows as you notice that the price is not making lower lows because there's a good chance that these levels will be respected. 
As we discussed earlier, always look for confirmation as this validation can help you ensure that you're not just seeing what you want to see, but the market that the market is actually going to move in your desired direction. The psychology of numbers is real in the case of trading as well. As humans, we love to think in terms of round numbers. It's easy to remember the whole numbers of like 10,000 or 20,000 in NASDAQ. The same works when traders are placing orders, opening positions, and closing their positions. Whole round numbers can be significant price levels on the chart. I want you to take a look at this NASDAQ chart, which shows NASDAQ running up towards the big round number of 20,000. You can see that it actually tries to test this level on three occasions before it finally breaks through. However, instead of holding the break, it takes the stops out and reverses lower. This isn't just a coincidence, it's psychology in action. When an asset approaches a round number and the more zeros it is, the more significant that round number is, there are many traders watching that level. Some see it as a target to achieve, while others view it as a barrier to break. This collective focus can influence the behavior around these price levels. And here's how you can use this for your trading. Start by watching. Watch how the price behaves as it nears these round numbers. Does it go down? Does it retreat? These reactions can signal potential buying or selling opportunities. Don't just take the numbers at face value. Test them. If you see it approaching a, a narrow number, wait and see if that holds or it actually breaks through. And once you have confirmation, you can use it as an advantage to enter a trade. Next, candlestick charts hold tons of information about the type of candle that, you know, can happen. A candle tells us the price action is particular period, the highs and lows, and where the price opened and closed. Candlestick patterns aren't just lines in a chart. They can tell a story about buyer and seller dynamics. How you can use them to trade is the real trick. For example, a hammer pattern suggests that price decline is actually near its ends. This means the trend might reverse from here and turn bullish again. As you can see in this chart, the price was going down until a hammer pattern appeared and the trend reversed to positive again. Likewise, an engulfing pattern, which is very popular, acts in the same way. It's a pattern where you have a large candlestick that covers a smaller one from a previous time frame and basically engulfs it. And as you can see in this chart, the red candle was completely engulfed by the large green candle and the trend that was bearish previously actually turned bullish. Now, there are a lot of candlestick patterns that you can spot on a price chart. Just practice identifying these patterns and then use them for your own trading analysis. So I hope you can see that you don't always need to add technical indicators to your charts, but what many traders do is they incorporate these price action principles and setups to their everyday trading strategy. If you see a hammer at a swing low, for example, that could be a very powerful signal for a churn. Which price action pattern do you think is the most reliable? Let us know in the comments below. We love hearing from you and learning together as a community. If you found this information useful, please consider subscribing to our channel and hitting that notification bell for updates. We'll be back soon with more content. Thanks for watching.